birthday too. Thank you. Happy Resurrection Day. How about that? Yes. Yeah? Yeah. Okay. So, if this is your first time here, welcome. My name is Arturo. I'm the pastor here at Castle Rock Church. And I'm also the youth director. We meet on Wednesday nights. And for the last maybe two months, we've started off youth group by asking the question, if you could ask God anything, what would it be? To my surprise, um, a lot of the teenagers said stuff like, I would like to ask them where my grandma is and if she's okay. And it surprised me. But once I thought about it, I was like, no, that's a perfectly normal, natural thing that we want to know as human beings. Where do we go after we die? So we talked about that. And uh, ever since then, I've been trying to get them to ask other questions such as, where do dinosaurs fit in the Bible? If God made all these stars and planets, are there aliens out there? And I've been trying to just come up with, you know, crazy big questions that make you through exciting and gets everybody involved in the conversation. Now, since we've been doing this, I've actually found myself asking God. Or what would I ask God? What would I ask God today at my age, just turned 35, what would I ask God today? Because I became a Christian when I was 16 years old and my question for God when I was 16 years old was, God, what am I supposed to do with my life? And then in my 20s, I asked, God, what am I supposed to do with my life? And in my 30s, I started asking, God, how am I supposed to do this? <laughs> and I um, started thinking about what if I could ask God today? Anything. Okay. Most of my questions about God have been answered in the Bible. Anything I've ever been curious about has been answered in the Bible. So I'm thinking for my 35th birthday, I need to think of a big, big, big question. And God is a big God. I want a question that is more honorable than Solomon asking God for wisdom. I want a question that is more supernatural than Enoch walking with God and then whoosh, being no more. I want a big question that is big like God, something that is outside of time, space, and matter, that's what I want to ask God. So I did. Believe it or not, I got an answer. Would you guys like to know what that question is? Yes. Okay, I said, it's my conversation with God. Now this is going to reveal a lot about my personality, my relationship with God. It's my relationship <coughs> with God. You may talk to God differently. This is how I talk to God. Is that okay? Okay. I said, God, is there any way that maybe I could, like, time travel and go meet all my friends and all my family and everyone I've ever had an influence on and everybody I've ever loved. Could I go back in time to the time they were five years old where they're young enough to believe but old enough to remember forever? Could I go back in time to when everyone I know is five years old, go up to them, hand them a Bible, Look at them right in the eyes and say, everything in this book is real. Your parents may tell you otherwise. Your church might even tell you otherwise. Your government will tell you otherwise, and so will your school. 
But I want you to know that this book and every single word in it can be trusted 100%. God, do you think I could do that? And God said, no. <laughs> I said, why not? He said, because you traumatize everyone. <laughs> Today, I can't time travel and tell you when you're five years old that this story I'm about to tell you it's true. So I'm about to tell you now. This story that I'm about to tell you on Easter Sunday is absolutely 100% true. I would like to talk about what happened between Jesus being on the cross with thorns penetrating his skin, his scalp, with wounds, ribs exposed, Nails driven through his nervous system, hanging by the bones and the flesh, all his weight on him. I want to talk about what Jesus did between that moment where he looked up at heaven and gave up his spirit to God. I want to talk about that moment. I want to talk about what happened between that moment and the moment three days later where Jesus' body is in a tomb. And there are Roman soldiers guarding it outside. And the women that followed Jesus and ministered were watching in the distance. And all of a sudden, lightning and thunder and two angels showed up. And the Roman Empire and the Romans turned white like Scooby-Doo. <laughs> and wet themselves and ran to the Roman Empire and had to lie about what they saw because they were so terrified. <laughs> I want to talk about what happened between Jesus on the cross and that resurrection. Is that okay? Is that okay with you guys? Something we don't talk about very often in church, but it's something. Every detail that I am about to share with you can be found in the Bible. Here's what happened when Jesus died. Jesus started going down into the earth. He went through the hill called Skull. He went through it. Rumor has it, that's where King David buried Goliath's head. Who knows if that's true or not. Jesus went through the mountain and went deep into the earth. Did you know that from the 60s and the 80s, the Russian government decided to see, let's see what's really past the crust of the earth. So from the 60s to the 80s, they drilled a hole, and it took that long to drill a hole. They could only get seven and a half miles deep before all the drill bits started melting. And eventually, they just gave up. We, as human beings, with our technology, we cannot go past seven and a half miles. Jesus went past that. Did you know that the director of Titanic and Avatar. Do you want to know what he did with all his money? Biggest grossing moves of all time. He went ahead and bought submarines and developed submarine technology. And he went to the bottom of the ocean, the deepest, furthest place. He broke the record. We went to the very, very, very bottom of the ocean and that was only seven miles. Huh? Seven miles. And when the submarine got to the bottom of the ocean, they found a beach, sand, just like a beach. And they're like, what is this? They followed the beach and they found a lake, a lake in the bottom of the ocean. You see, in the book of Genesis, the Bible says that God separated the waters from the waters. If you were to take a little tube and you put a little olive oil in it and you put a little water and a little Kool-Aid and some rocks and some sand, it's all going to, because of the buoyancy, going to separate, okay? The water at the bottom of the ocean was a different, was of a different density, a different substance, and the wing, the submarine just bounces off the water. They can't look past there. Now, if you think YouTube is a credible resource, which is not always, 
There's even scientists that claim, I do not know if this is real. YouTube can be a very messy place. But there are scientists that claim that when they send sonar radars deep past that lake, they hear sounds that they don't even hear like in space when they were sending microphones out there. They heard sounds that literally sound like giant chains dragging across the ocean floor. You can believe it or you cannot. Like I said, it's questionable. But there are people saying very mysterious things about the place we live. Very mysterious things about the bottom of the ocean. Very mysterious things about the crust. Jesus went past that lake. Now, this next thing I'm about to say is very controversial. And denominations fight about this all the time. And I'm going to rest it in peace once and for all. If you read it in context, there is no confusion. Let's talk about the word hell. Hell, we all think, is, you know, you go down there and burn. Hell is a place for, of the future. Okay, that's the lake of fire. Right now, what the Bible says is actually underneath the earth is what we throughout history have been calling Hades or Sheol. This is what the Bible has to say about this place down there. It's made up of four parts. First part is really scary. It says that there's angels that are chained up down there waiting for the white throne judgment of God in the future to be punished for all the evil they did before the flood. That's one section of Hades. Then there's this big gulf, this big giant space. And on one side is a place that they refer to as a, a prison. And everybody like Tubal Cain, everybody like Saul, everybody that, you know, was an enemy of God before Jesus is waiting there. Waiting, okay? And then on the other side is a place Jesus calls paradise. It's what the Jews call Abraham's bosom. And on that side is King David, Adam and Eve, Seth, Seth. And it says, the Bible, that when Jesus died, left the cross, he went down there and he ministered to the people in prison. And he ministered to the people in paradise. It's a very weird detail. We don't know much more other than that. But next thing we know on earth, in Jerusalem, the Bible says that graves, tombstones were opened up and godly people that died were walking around just talking and telling them what Jesus did. Doesn't tell us if they like died again and were buried again. Doesn't tell us if they like shot up to the sky. I don't know. We don't know. The Bible's very mysterious on this topic. But that is what the Bible teaches. I would like to ask you guys, what man? In history, what prophet, what God can do such a thing? Certainly not the pagan gods these Easter celebrations are really based on. Certainly not them. Jesus Christ, the Son of God, God in the flesh, is the only one that can make claims this supernatural, this drastic, this extreme. So I ask you guys, do you believe? Do you believe? It's a simple yes or no. If we don't believe that Jesus was resurrected, why are we here? Sure, he can teach good things like love your neighbor and stuff, but so can God be, Mother Teresa. What is it about Jesus that's different from everybody else? Going to hell, or not hell, Hades. Giving hope to the prisoners that messed up. 
fulfilling the promises that people like King David were looking to the future, all the prophets were looking to the future for this Messiah to come, they finally get their promise fulfilled. And he's got the guts to go down into the deepest chambers. Look at the devil in the face. Look at his fallen angels in the face. Jesus walks up to the deepest chamber of Hades and you hear chains dragging across the ocean floor. Angels wanting to hide from the light. And the angels say, Why have you come before our time? Jesus looks at the angels in the eye and says, I'll be back then. That's the kind of God we serve. So I'd like to invite Natalie up. She's going to uh, play a very beautiful meditative song. As she's playing, I want you guys just to listen to the words. Close your eyes if you have to. Meditate. Talk to God. Okay? Talk to God this Easter morning. And ask Him. Be honest with Him. Do I believe? Do I believe this Christian thing? Do I believe it? And if you're having a hard time, and if you're not sure, tell that to God. God knows every thought of your heart, every thought of your mind. You can't hide anything from Him. If you have a hard time believing, ask Him. There was a time where a disciple was having a hard time believing God, resurrected from the dead, and he's like, I won't believe it until I put my finger in His hands. I'm like that a lot. I've had to ask God many times to let me put my finger in his hands because I didn't believe some of the promises that are in the Bible. Maybe you have to do that. Either way, make this Easter a celebration not just about the resurrection of your life. I mean, the resurrection of Jesus. Make this an Easter about the resurrection of your faith. The resurrection of your walk with God. 